Welcome to the Artist Connection YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna have a conversation with Shine, who is the owner of Peaks and Valleys here in Sacramento, California. Uh, just gonna throw it to Shine to introduce himself a little bit more. Yeah, like you said, my name is uh, Shine. I own a studio in Sacramento, California called Peaks and Valleys, where we also cultivate young artists to help bring them up to a level where they could take a full advantage of their career and, and really succeed. And that's what we're really about. But uh, yeah, I'm glad to be on the show and be a part of what you're doing. Of course, man. So there's a lot of things that, that we could talk about. And I realize like if me and you just had an off the cuff conversation, we could probably go for five, six hours and we were just talking about all things, your yeah, life, tattooing, whatever it might be. So the one thing that I wanted to talk about and kind of keep the subject on today was you were on a tattoo show or more or less a reality TV show that yeah. was related to tattooing. What year was that on? Oh man, good question because I don't even remember the year. Uh, it had to be, we're in 2023. It had to be, well it's pretty, it be about 2019, maybe 2018, 2019. Had to be somewhere around there. All right, so Sean was on the Black Ink Crew Chicago and this was season five, right? Season five. Okay, so I watched it in preparation for this talk just to kind of make sure I covered it, but um, you were not necessarily a main character, as we say, but you had a very big role, I guess you could say, within the season. Yeah. Um, as far as getting into a TV show, you know, what was that process like? Um, yeah, so that's usually people's first question is how did you even get this opportunity? and a lot of people think that I must have like reached out and done a lot of that and like kind of like poked them to get me on the show and stuff. But honestly, like just the exposure at the time I was doing a lot of YouTube, uh, a lot of vlogging, a lot of putting out content in that way. And we were very prolific at the time with that. And honestly, it was just from that, like that type of exposure and then the right people seeing my content. I was actually contacted by someone from VH1, a producer random phone call, just called my phone number and said, hey, this is, you know, from VH1. We have a we have a spot on a show that we produce and we think your personality would be great for it. If you're interested, we could take the next steps, blah, blah, blah. And that's uh, kind of how it went. I think that the, um, the owner of the shop that the TV show is about always showed love on Instagram back and forth. So I knew he knew who I was. So there might have been some connection there to where he might have pointed me out to the producer. So it might have been a little bit of that as well. But yeah, they reached out to me. OK. And that was going to kind of be one of my questions as well was, I believe the very first time you show up in the TV show, that's basically what the owner of the shop says. He's like, hey, I've seen Shine stuff on you know social media, you know, We've been messing with each other for a while or whatever he said. And basically Ryan kind of came in and, and, you know, he was like, yeah, we've been seeing each other stuff on social media. And that's kind of how you guys got connected. So that was kind of yeah. true. That's actually how it. That part is true. hundred percent. Yeah. So as far as where it was filmed, obviously it's called Black Ink Crew Chicago. So I imagine in Chicago. It's in Chicago. So how long were you there? How long did all that filming kind of take? Uh, well, my parts of filming were sporadic. It's not like I moved to Chicago to film all of it. It was, they would fly me out whenever they needed me to film. And I would, they would tell me how long they would need me for and how many outfits to bring and how long I'm gonna stay and all that stuff. And they would instantly book my flight and send me the itinerary. And then the struggle about that is, is like I have a full schedule of tattooing. So the hard part was they would hit me up out of nowhere. Like if I was still doing the show, they would call me right now and then be like, hey, we need you for a week. Um, bring 10 outfits and we're going to fly you out tomorrow. Your flight's at 4 a.m. But mind you, I have an appointment tomorrow. I have an appointment after that. I have the so then it's this big scramble to figure out how to reschedule my appointments and let them know and like try to adjust it in a way that doesn't feel like I'm putting the show before the clients. But a lot of my clients were super cool and understood the situation, that it was a unique situation. It's not like I would just like dump their appointment for any random reason. It's like now or never. That's the kind of uh, sentiment that was behind this, right? So yeah, I would just sporadically get flown out there. Eventually they wanted me to move to Chicago, but I turned it down because I already had so much going on in Sacramento for myself, but I'm sure we'll get to that. But like, uh, yeah, they would just hit me up randomly and I would fly out there on their own time and I would just have to scramble to make it happen. And so I guess to kind of 
not backstep a little bit, but to better explain for maybe people that are watching this that have never seen the show, in your own words, how would you describe sure. the show? Sure. So although it's a black ink crew, it's tattoo artists and stuff, it's less about tattoos and more about the drama of tattoo artists in Chicago. That's what I would describe it as more so. Uh, because, you know, there's tattoos shown in there, but it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of rare for there to be a tattoo in an episode, right? It's not every episode you're gonna see tattoos and stuff like that. It's very rarely they put one in there just to remind you that they tattoo. But it's like more so the drama within the shop, the dynamic between the people that interact with each other on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's very, uh, is very ramped up to make it seem very uh, dramatic and a lot going on and stuff like that. So they don't really highlight the tattoos that much, but I guess it's still good for tattooing because it puts it in front of a lot of people's eyeballs. As long as people understand that there's different facets to tattooing, different niches and different types of people that tattoo. So that's not the only light that you're gonna see tattooing in. It's just the one that's highlighted on that show specifically. Now, with that being said, and I think you described it very well, it's very similar to the way I would explain it. Before we turn the cameras on, I was saying it's about 95% reality TV show, 5% yeah. tattooing. Yeah. Did you know that getting into it? And obviously, if you did, were you okay with that? So I did know that, but only because I actually, when I first started tattooing, Black Ink Crew was a show already. So, or shortly after there. Um, so I used to watch Black Ink Crew, New York, and then when Chicago came on, I watched that. I had already known the people on the show from watching the show before I went on there. So I knew what the show was and all of that. I knew that there was some sort of angle they were trying to put me into. Obviously, it's Black Ink Crew Chicago, and they get a white kid from the hood of Sacramento that tattoos, and they're going to throw him in and just let's see what happens, right? Sounds like a good wrench to throw into the gears over there and make something pop off, right? Um, whether it's at my detriment or not. So I knew it was going to be like that. I did go back and forth in my head and I was asking different mentors I had at the time whether I should do it or not. But the sentiment always came back to, um, you know, you would always wonder what it would be like if you didn't do it. And if you did do it, you would have no regrets. So it's kind of like as long as you approached it with the right attitude and, and very intentional about how you wanted to be portrayed or just what comes out of your mouth and don't get caught up in the whole glamour of it because you can get real caught up in the moment on the show and really uh, let some things fly that you wish never flew, you know, and um, that's what you kind of got to be careful of. And that's what they're preying on is that type of stuff. So I knew I was going to be very intentional about how I was portrayed on there or just how I was going to act while I was on there. And as long as I kept that there, I'm, I'm glad I did it because it was a good experience and it's a very rare experience to get offered. So of course I had to say yes and I just went through with it. <laughs> Did you kind of feel them trying to poke the bear a little bit as you were on show, trying to get a reaction out of you, trying to get you to kind of play into that reality TV show game? Yeah, hundred percent. Honestly, it, it gave me a huge insight on like what other, all reality TV has done like, right? There's constantly multiple producers behind the cameras and multiple cameras. The producers are puppeteering in a, in a sense what is happening. And it's kind of an odd thing to do because you're basically an actor playing yourself in a situation that you wouldn't normally be in. So that's how I would almost explain it because it's like, I'm acting in this scene and the things that are happening, I wouldn't be in this situation if it wasn't for the show. Like I wouldn't be sitting in this room talking to so-and-so and so-and-so if it wasn't for the show itself. So I didn't actually have any reason to be there other than the show. So then that creates like a weird dynamic. You're almost trying to like play into the situation that they set. And then if it's not exciting enough, they'll poke you to do something even crazier, like talk shit to this person, or they'll hold up a sign behind the camera that says, say this or some, something like that. And you don't always agree with what they want you to say. And you don't, you're like, I wouldn't fucking say that. So sometimes I would even, you know, see what, I'm like, no. Like in the middle of the shot, I'll be like, no, no, no. And it's, uh, you know, they're trying to pull, I get it, they're trying to pull the story, they're trying to pull, but they don't give a shit about your reputation in real life, they don't care about the backlash, they care about the show getting ratings, and of course that's their job and such, but that means there's no one there to watch your back besides yourself, so you gotta be very intentional about how you approach it. Mm. You walk onto set day one, mm. you said you watched the show before, you know, you were a part of it, were, were you star starstruck? 
you know, were you just amazed to be on set for the first time? Like walk me through a little bit of that first day on set. I don't think I was starstruck. I think it was very surreal because um, leading up to the point of you actually being there filming, you're all constantly like running it through your mind about what it might be like as anybody would. But I told myself, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna approach it with my chin high and like everyone's gonna feel anxious and stuff. It's just about how you combat that anxiousness and stuff. I just really wanted to approach it strong, like really strong-willed and like uh, not let that anxiety get so deep that it, uh, it affects you in a really deep way in the moment, you know? Cause a lot of people put in that very high pressure situation they throw you in, in the fucking boiling water. Like they just throw you in there and expect you to do it. And a lot of people would crumble, but I knew ahead of time, I told myself, I'm gonna approach this really strong, like really solid right here where you would feel that anxiety. I just wanted that to feel solid the whole time. So I think I was pretty good as far as my approach, but um, it's funny, the first day of filming when I went there, I was supposed to film. I ended up staying behind the camera off scene for hours because they were, there was something going on on camera that was unscripted, no one knew was gonna happen. It ended up being a giant fight between like 10 people. And I ended up not being able to film that day after waiting so long. And that was a real fight. People really got hurt, went to the hospital and all that stuff. So my first impression of what the show was gonna be like when I got there ended up being chaos. It was pure chaos. But I got to, you know, see what was going on and stuff. And then by the time we were gonna film, I had like, I was like, oh my God, this is wild and stuff, you know, but. Now I, you know, know you, you're, you're very good in front of camera. As you said, you were putting out content via social media, YouTube, all this. Where, what's that difference between, you know, internet content versus reality TV show? Yeah. So I think the biggest difference is you get to, when you're doing your own content, you get to set your own narrative. You set what light people see you in. You, you kind of set the subjects you talk about or like what, you want to be portrayed as and it's like i would say that doing con doing content yourself is more genuine to who you are rather than the reality tv stuff because they're trying to pull characteristics out of you and pull even the bad parts out of you just to get something going out of there right something that you would normally not even involve yourself in um, they want you to be involved in and then that's going to bring out sides of you or or even make you play into it in a way that's more acting than it is reality and then you realize that people that watch the show are taking what they're seeing and taking it as pure reality. And it's just not true. So they'll judge you and your entire character based on what is seen on there when I'd rather them judge me on my more um, intentional content, my more, my more transparent content, which is more on YouTube and stuff like that. So I talked about a lot of that on my vlogs because I vlogged the entire time while I was on the show, which was a good behind the scenes perspective. So I let people know, I'm just like, this is the real me. And then what you see is what we had to what we had to cultivate to make it work on the show type thing or whatever they did in the editing room and post or whatever they did in the filming and stuff like that. And they don't let you see how they portray you before they before they uh, put it out. You don't get no idea. You don't get no heads up, no nothing. You find out with everybody else when the show drops and that could be super edited. They could put words in the sentences that you didn't even say. Like they could take a word that you said over here and put it in here and make it sound like you cussed at this person or you said made this noise or said this thing when you didn't actually say that. They're just trying to create the storyline. So at the end of the day, it's storylines. There is a scene uh, in the show where you are doing a tattoo. I would say yes. maybe the most tattooing I saw in the entire season was your scene of being able to put a tattoo on somebody. Uh, talk to me a little bit about, do you even remember that tattoo? Uh, I remember it was a past client you already had yep. work on. Run me through that, that day or a few days of filming uh, yeah. for your tattoo. So I told the producers, like, if I'm going to tattoo on the show, I want to be very intentional about it. I'm not just going to like, we're not just going to bring some random off the street and I'm just going to do a little walk in tat on them or something like that. If this is my moment to show what I'm really about, which was tattooing. And I was more about tattooing than anybody else on the show. They were more about other stuff, you know, the, the, the other characteristics of being on the reality show. But for me, yeah, there's my personality, but then I wanted to show, like, I really do this. And if, if anybody else on here, I really do this, you know? And so I told the producer, I'm picking my client. I'm gonna do what I want. It's gonna take me as long as it takes me, that type of stuff, right? Cause they want you to bang out a tattoo in a couple hours so they could just film it, go home type thing, right? But I'm like, no, any tattoo I'm gonna do is gonna be at least six hours. And you guys are just, it's just gonna be that, right? 
So luckily I had a, um, a client I had already started his sleeve, really good client. He's originally from uh, England and he came out to Chicago just to be on the show to film with me, which is really something, man, because he had to do his own part in the film and the scenes and stuff. He had to, you know, he had to do the walk in and the greet and the and he had to be on the show and like actually be a part of the process of the show. It's not just walk and get tattooed. He actually had to do his own part, which shout out to him for being so cool about it and stuff. He actually really enjoyed it because it's kind of a cool um, experience for anybody to have. But yeah, I was really intentional about what I was going to tattoo. I, I do remember the tattoo. It was um, really dope. You know, it's, it's not saying like I did the best tattoo I've ever done ever. It's just like I did a tattoo that was more my style that I would normally do on a really cool client. And I got to show my tattooing in a light that is more accurate to real life. Mm. Yeah. Now, kind of going back to the timeline of the show itself. You get introduced, you're kind of a part of the normal day-to-day -day stuff. I would say not too drama on you, too, too much drama on your end, yeah. which obviously talking to you now sounds like it was very intentional. Right. We get to the end of your arc, which is you guys are at, I believe it was the Las Vegas uh, convention, tattoo convention. Yeah. Things go crazy, people aren't bringing banners, they're not showing up to work, this, that, just drama, which obviously is the show itself. You pull the owner of the shop aside and you say, hey, this isn't cut out for me, I'm out of here. Was that real, was that staged? Walk me through a little bit of that process. So it's funny because, yeah, a lot of people bring that scene up too. That was actually staged. Okay. Now, mind you, I did have real complaints about what was going on at the convention because I knew a lot of people there and I was already well known in the industry enough to have, like people, I go to the convention, I know people, people know me and, and they're just like, Oh, who you're here with? I'm like, oh, I'm with the show, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they have their own reservations about what the show is, right? Especially at a big convention like the Las Vegas one, everyone is there. So, yeah, it was a little embarrassing to be a part of something that was like, like a shit show off in the corner where people are fighting and all this stuff. And you don't fight at tattoo conventions, bro. Like, that's not the vibe there and stuff. And I didn't want to be recognized as being in that group in that way. You know what I mean? I didn't partake in that, right? It was a good segue, though, because I was supposed to stay in Las Vegas for, I don't remember what it was, probably three weeks in total. I stayed for like a week with them. We all got a big Airbnb. The show got us a big Airbnb. We all stayed in one house, and it was basically like Jersey Shore style, you know? They film you getting ready. They film you getting up. They film you all the way through, all the way to getting drunk, going back to the house, and all that stuff, right? But at the convention specifically, I actually had to go back to Sacramento early because of my buddy uh, Angelo's wedding landed right in the middle of our trip. And I wasn't going to miss the wedding, so I told the show I have to be back for the wedding. And they were like, well, shit. I mean, we needed you for like three weeks, but now you're going to leave halfway through. We got to figure out a way to make that make sense in the, in the storyline. So after all that stuff went down, we, uh, I talked it out with the producer, and that was actually a perfect segue. And I was like, here it is. After the, because the fight that happened at the convention was real. It was a real fight. There was real beef going on. But then we were like, how do we take this and flip it and stuff? Because I was already complaining about like, how messed up everything was, and they didn't know how to like, sign up for conventions and do the paperwork properly. So now I was able to segue, and then uh, I, I said my goodbyes, and then I was able to go back to the house. They booked me a flight for like 4 a.m. So I had to take an Uber from the, from the house at Las Vegas. It was tough. And then I didn't sleep at all. And then I went to go pick up my tux right when Men's Warehouse opened and I went straight to the wedding. And mind you, I was so, cause I didn't sleep for 24 hours and I filmed and everything. So I get to the wedding and I'm basically falling asleep on my feet, standing up. But I made it there, I, 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 I kept my word to be there, and that was most of it, and it was, a, it was a good segue to get out of the show in that moment so that I could make the wedding. Do you know what would have happened if you didn't have that wedding during that time period and you would have stayed for the, the full three weeks? More activities, um, more things, you know, they wanted to get us those big uh, T-Rex, um, uh, not car, not go-kart, but the things that are like three-wheeler, go hella fast, and they're stick shift. They got everybody one of those, and they just like mobbed around uh, Las Vegas Strip and stuff. They just they give you things to do to get content out of, right? So not just the convention. So I would have just had more activities, more things to do, more fun, more stuff like that, but trying to grab more content out of it for the show. 
I guess what that would have been like the end of your story arc would you would have just said, hey, I'm peace. I mean, obviously you were a, like always a guest artist. Um, would that just have been, you know, hey, I'm going back home, Sacramento. Or honestly, honestly, they wrapped it, it up nice in a bow. You yeah. know what I mean? It made it a part yeah. of the story. Honestly, it would have just kept going. It wouldn't have been an end to it because my actual end with the show didn't happen at that point. It happened after that. And that was just a moment where in the storyline, it seemed that I cut out and stuff. But later on, I come back. But they just had to make it work in the storyline. So they made it to where I came back and it was a big deal and all this stuff. When in reality, we just kept the same flow of everything, right? Um, I would say, and, at, and at, at a certain point after all of it, when I actually decided to leave the show they wanted me to sign a contract with them for uh two seasons and become a main character on there but that would mean i would need to move to chicago that was one of the things right and at that time i was i didn't see the value in in putting my whole life into the show versus what i was already putting myself into back in sacramento which was I already had started building a team. I had, I had the shop running and it was like, I had really good artists that I respected that were working for me and stuff. And if I were to move to Chicago just to do the show, I don't feel like, although I would have became more popular on reality TV, I don't feel like it would have been a positive effect on my life other than that way. Just because it's uh, once your whole life is the show, your, your, your mood, how you feel emotionally, all of that stuff is gonna ride up and down with the show. And this is just, it's just not a way to live. A lot of the people that are fully committed to the show are very um, emotionally fragile because it's, it's like their, their real life and their show life are so intermixed, they don't even know what's real and what's fake anymore. Cause like the world is judging them on the fake, but then they have the real but then it's so intertwined, everyone you meet is basing it off of the fake that it's just like hard to differ how to feel about your own life. So reality TV is a, is, is, is a hell of a thing. It really affects your life in that way. And it can do amazing things for your career and stuff, but it just depends on how you take it uh, emotionally and personally. Now, we know present day, obviously you didn't take that uh, opportunity to, to be on for two more seasons. Is there any part of you that kind of in a different multiverse was like, maybe I wish I would have done that. Or are you 100% uh, content in your decision to not have taken that path? I mean, when I was making the decision, obviously I played around with what it would be like if I did do it before I made the decision. And it's basically like I, like I just explained, it's just like uh, there was obviously be benefits for the popularity and stuff. I probably, you know, maybe I have a million followers by now and all this stuff. But like in, in what way would it develop my character as a person? In what way would it lead me down a path that is going to take me uh, throughout the rest of my career and the rest of my life and stuff? Because um, even after I did that, even if I had the popularity, I would still have to figure out what my thing was to go beyond that. And my whole thing was, was and still is, is I don't want the show to be the biggest thing I've ever done. And that was a big hitter for me. I didn't want to do the show and then I'd constantly be living under the shadow of when I did the show. And that was like a personal thing to me. So even if I did take the contract and did the show, eventually I would be not doing it. And then at that point, what am I, who am I, and what do I do? Because at that point I would have had to shut the shop down. I wouldn't have a shop, I wouldn't have the guys. The guys that I did have working for me or do have working for me would have gone off and done their own things. Life would have just been so scattered. I bet you I would have been lost. A million followers, doesn't matter. I would have been lost because I need to find my path and find my own voice. And I've always been that type of person that I need to feel, uh, I need to feel strong in what I believe I'm like meant to do. And if that is lost and I have no like direct purpose and it's not a clear vision, uh, then I'm, I'm not going to feel good about my life. And I, I felt clearer with the vision of what I had started already cultivating in Sacramento with the shop, that that felt better than going and doing the show. Now, two things I want to touch on. Number one is just Sacramento in general. That was one thing that I, already knowing you before I watched the show, uh, maybe it wasn't as apparent because I know you ride hard for Sacramento. But when watching the show, that was, I want to say, one of the very first things you said. You were made it very clear you weren't from Chicago, you were from Sacramento, yeah. and you were very proud to be from Sacramento. You know, 100%. and it sounds like that kind of coexists and relates to what you were just saying, where, you know, you would have, yes, maybe gained more popularity and success, but at, basically at what cost? Yeah, 100%. Um, you obviously, throughout this interview, 
you know, mentioned multiple times, and it, it definitely came through in the show, how purposeful you were and how you presented yourself. You know, you, as much as you didn't have control of everything, you did obviously have control of yourself, yeah. and how you presented yourself. Now, I would say that that was a success because in doing my research on your time on the show, all I saw were positive comments from people via social media on your personality, your artwork. People had virtually nothing but good things to say. So it seems like all that hard work did pay off and that your, you know, your efforts weren't for nothing. Right. Yeah. And I, I think that I wanted to walk away from it knowing that I gained rather than lost or at least didn't like uh, uh, hurt my reputation or just stray too far away from who I actually am because I'd rather like keep that as aligned as possible. And even if that meant not making the best television, um, at least anybody that did absorb what I did do on the show, they would have nothing bad to say about it. And the people that are real ones would understand about staying true to yourself and what you actually are. So like, they don't give you a lot of opportunities to state like where you're from or that you're proud of being from there. So I had to shove that in there. But uh, uh, previous to me going on the show, I thought there would be plenty of times where I'd be able to be like, I, my name is Shine, I'm from Sacramento and I am born and raised there and blah, blah, and all this stuff. There was never a time for that. So I had to insert it in there. I wanted to make sure that the people that know me from Sacramento understood that I wasn't just about to up and leave Sacramento, go to Chicago, and now I'm a Chicago guy just because I had moved there because that's where it's at and like, fuck Sacramento. Like, that was never the intention. I was always just visiting and then I'm going back to Sacramento, always keeping Sacramento close. And uh, I wanted people to know because like Sacramento is only in the light that people know it as, which is not very, you know, they don't have a high opinion about it. They don't even have an opinion about it. They don't really know about it. Um, they just know it's the capital of California and it's just a place. And everyone in Chicago thinks that everywhere in California is LA. So they're like, Sacramento, what is that? Some suburb in near LA? I'm like, no, not at all. Like you couldn't be more farther from the truth, you know? And with the show being about Chicago, I just didn't want to get stuck in that in that uh, that sphere of just Chicago, 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 just just Chicago, just all that. I wanted them to know I was visiting there from somewhere. So I tried to state that as much as I could. Now, show ends. Obviously, you're done filming. The show comes out. Uh, are you, you know, sitting on your couch with some popcorn, like just ready to watch every single episode? And and once they did come out, what was that reception like? So how it would work is we would film and then they would drop an episode and we'd film some more and we would drop an episode. It wasn't like we filmed the entire season and then they started dropping. We were filming as the season was going along. So you'd film a bunch and stuff and you don't know how, what clips are gonna be used, what is gonna be deleted scenes, what is gonna be on the website, what is gonna be deleted completely, all that stuff. So you don't really know what it's gonna come out like, you just know the clips that you've filmed. Again, which is why being super intentional about when you are on camera, what you're saying and doing is gonna be, because they can mesh it together to be something it's not. But I'd say the first episode that dropped, I, I did make a, a thing of it. I invited some friends to the shop that I had at the time and we all gathered together and played it on the TV and watched it and stuff, which was really fun. That was exciting because that was actually the most exciting part was that moment was, the first episode dropping, that I'm on, everyone gets to see. That was the most fun of the entire experience, that moment. And the feedback was, I've never experienced this in my life and it was kind of cool to experience it, but uh, as soon as the show dropped, my Instagram and stuff was just going crazy. It was just wild. I think in that same night that the, that the show dropped, within, a, let's say, three to four hours, like in 25,000 followers, so I just like kept refreshing and it was just wild to see the numbers. It was just, you refresh and it said 1,700 new followers, 12,000 new likes. And you refresh again two seconds later and it said another 3,000, another this, another. And it was just wild to see the volume of uh, engagement from it, right? And that was really cool too. And that gave me like that little boost and it was really cool. And then that first episode wasn't too bad. So it was kind of cool that they got to see me and everything. Well, yeah, that, that part was um, positive. But following that, I tried to watch another episode following that. Didn't really like click with me wanting to watch it. And then after that, I just didn't watch the episodes because I just didn't want to care too much about, I knew how I did it in the clips and I just didn't want to see how they portrayed it because I just, 
it was just made me feel uncomfortable to see their interpretation of the way they wanted to put it together versus how I wanted it to be. You know, I didn't want that conflicting thing to get to me too much so I could just keep doing it. So just to be clear, even to this day, you still haven't seen anything past that very first episode. I, I saw some of like the maybe the second episode and maybe a clip of the third because they post clips and stuff like that on Instagram. They even put a uh, deleted scene of you up, I guess, that didn't make the show, but what, you guys went out for soul food. And soul food, yeah, I remember that day. Yeah, that whole day was uh, scrapped, but they actually took me to the hood in Chicago, like the, the worst hood there is. And they, we had a bunch of scenes where we went to got soul food and then they dropped me off on the corner somewhere uh, in the middle of the hood and I was calling someone to come pick me up and we were acting like, hey, where'd you guys go? But totally fake and stuff. But they wanted to see what it would be like for me to be dropped in the middle of a hood in Chicago and then me trying to like get out of it type thing. But I don't think it worked the way they thought it would be. And you know, they're, they're going off of stereotypes, I think. Like I said, they're trying to put this white dude from Sacramento is from the hood in this way, but they're trying to put him in the middle of a crazy, like Chicago's a crazy ass place. So they're just trying to see what happens if they just shove me in there, right? And I'm fairly comfortable like wherever I go, no matter what the situation and stuff. So we were basically trying to act out something that wasn't actually happening, you know? So I guess maybe that's why they deleted those scenes and stuff, but the soul food was really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as, you know, net positive versus maybe any negative things that, that came from the show, uh, would you say the positive outweighed the negative or vice versa? Positive definitely outweighed the negative just because I don't regret doing the show at all. I can't think back to any scenes that are so bad that I'm just like, oh man, I wish that never came out. And there's not a lot that I have to live down to this day to where people are just bringing up that something that is just like, oh my God, like you, I remember the scene where you were this and that and like, you know, people bring it up, but nothing that's like too negative or anything like that. So I'm happy I did it. I got the experience of a lifetime. I got to see how producing and filmmaking and all that stuff is done on reality TV shows at a high level, like what mics they use, what kind of cameras they're using and like what setup they do, where's the editing space and what, all that stuff, how many producers they have. I like knowing stuff like that, even for our personal content, just so we can get a different perspective on how the big dogs do it. But um, yeah, man, I think, I think net, net positive, net positive. Um, there, there was some hate from some of the guys that are actually on the show, but I think they just had a preconceived notion of who I might be and they just felt like I was an outsider. But for the most part, I'd say, Nine out of 10 cast members was absolutely inviting and they're still my friends to this day and it was really fun to interact with them. And when I would show up again for another scene, they would be super excited to see me, the girls, the guys, everything. But yeah, man, it was, I think net positive. Is uh, there any one person that uh, sticks out that maybe you're closer to than everyone else after that experience was all said and done? I mean, Ryan, for sure. Ryan is the uh, owner of the shop that the show is about. Uh, Ryan has a big, uh, a long past and like him getting to where he is at today and people can say what you want to about him, but they're only judging him off of the show. But from what I know about him, he's a really respectable guy. He's really smart and he's not, he's not super like prejudgy to people. He respected me right off the bat. He was giving me advice ahead of time. And, um, like before my first day shooting, he picked me up and we went and ate and we just talked about a bunch and he was just giving me tips on how to survive in the show. And ever since then, he's always been cool. He's always been just a cool dude. And there was, there was a bunch of females on the show that were really cool too, that were really nice to me and really cool. We got along great. Um, the other guys, they were really cool too, but Ryan I definitely was closer with. And then even to this day, me, Ryan, and I would say four uh, interact a lot on Instagram still to this day. And we still remember back at those times, like it's not like we're strangers to each other now. We actually know each other and it's kind of, it's kind of cool to keep those relationships open. All right now, obviously when you look at the grand scheme of your entire tattoo journey, you know, the, you being on this TV show is a very, very small portion of it. But right. for, because the, the show has such a big reach, you know, for some people, that's all they know you from. Were you ever boxed in as a, you know, TV tattooer? Was there any, you know, uh, I guess kind of backlash or any bad things that came from that? Well, I did have I did have some clients that I had already tattooed before the show that said if they saw that show, saw me, saw me on that show first as the first impression of me that they wouldn't have gotten tattooed by me. 
just because I guess they're judging the show itself and then me even being involved in a show like that, they would have just, but then again, that's on their own like very personal preconceptions of what it is, you know? And it's like, they might've been a little too judgy in that way. But um, I'd say I gained a lot of new followers and fans that I didn't tap into before as much, you know? A lot of African-American fans after that. Uh, obviously because like the the show is more geared towards African Americans and stuff but like a lot of love dude like uh, after the show following the show and maybe a couple years after the show I, I felt like that little 15 minutes of fame because I was signing autographs I was taking pictures everywhere I went no matter where I went I was in Hawaii I was in New York I was in Chicago I was in fucking uh, any, anywhere I went even in Sacramento constantly I was signing autographs and taking pictures, at least while the show was fresh, you know, and it was fresh in people's minds. I'd go to the movies and then one person would stop me, I had to take a picture, sign an autograph, and then there would be a line of six people right after that person because they're like, oh, that's, that's Shine from Black Ink. Oh my God, like, can I get a picture? And that was constant. So it was a lot of love and it felt great to do that because I got to experience that. I would say that like, I feel bad for people that are extremely famous because it's so hard to, just exist in a normal like being outside just normally because you're always going to get poked and prodded by somebody like someone's going to come up to you someone's going to say something so you got to deal with that but overall like super positive feedback from people and stuff and they only love the especially in sacramento they love the fact that i held true to sacramento and people that are real sacramento natives really respect that and i'm glad that they picked up on that because it was subtle but it was also intentional on my behalf for yourself now, kind of having been through it, uh, let's say if maybe even one of the guys at your shop or somebody that you knew that was a tattoo artist that was thinking about being on a show like this, what would be that advice you would give to them before going through that process? I would try to give them the real uncut version of what it is by me explaining it to them before they get there so that they're in, so that they're expectations are level with what the reality is just so that they could prepare themselves and then it's just about like deciding whether you want to do it or not in the first place you know because you have to deal with a lot of stuff and you have to like I said they would probably approach it the same way I did being intentional about what they show and like and stay, trying to stay true to who they are and stuff like that because a lot of guys that I'm around and stuff they're 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 very uh they are themselves you know they are truly themselves and they wouldn't just go off and just turn into a different person just for the show so i would i basically tell them like this is what they told me it would be like and then this is how it actually was the first piece of advice that ryan gave me uh when he picked me up and we went and he ate he said you know all of this is about storylines and the way you're going to fit in you have to either be fighting or fucking which is basically like you either got to be beefing with somebody or you got to be in a relationship with somebody or talking to somebody or having that kind of intermingling with somebody else on the cast that way they have a storyline to follow and then they could build on that throughout time so they got to understand you're going to have to play into a storyline even if it's not real you know, they had me trying to be in a relationship with one of the cast members and it wasn't real. And it was just, um, you know, it's just it's just if you want to be a part of that life. Some people, they are so like like true to themselves, they wouldn't even want to do it because they wouldn't even want to try to uh, separate themselves out of that to make good TV. They just don't see the point in it. And then there's other people that would be like, shit, if I got that opportunity, I'd go out there and start knocking people out. And I'm just like, yeah, that's cool for you to say, but those are mostly people that don't already have a reputation and they would just dive right into the show. So I would just get a realistic expectation for them of what to expect. I wouldn't tell them not to do it or to do it. I would let them make that decision themselves. Um, but I would just say, you know, whatever happens is going to live on forever. So just keep that in mind when you're, you know, playing around in the moment. Maybe they get you drunk and they're trying to get you to do some stupid shit. Just be very intentional about who you are. Stay true to who you are. Uh, if people want to follow you and kind of keep along with your journey, where's going to be the best places for them to do that? Yeah, I announce everything on my Instagram pretty much and any new things I do, even if YouTube stuff and stuff. But like I would say Instagram at I shine Inc. I S H I N E I N K. Um, our shop is Peaks and Valleys. You can follow us at, at Peaks and Valleys brand 
on Instagram. And we have a ton of really good artists you guys should follow. I'm in the middle of making a ton of uh, coaching content. I'm trying to help young artists that are looking for a path and a mentor and just a way to uh, go about their career. I want to teach them and help them on a massive scale. And I'm providing actionable, very valuable content and information. Um, that's the type of content I post on my Instagram, and I'm going to be going deeper on that when I, when I drop these uh, courses and coaching program where we're going to do a three-month transform transformation course to make sure that your life is balanced out with your career and you also have the right standards set for yourself as far as integrity with your work. So it'll be really fun to help young artists do that because I've already done that on a small scale here at the shop and I've proven it, and now it's about to take it a lot broader and help a lot of other people. So that's where you can follow me and that's what we're about. Yeah, dude. Well, hey, I really do appreciate it. I think uh, a lot of people are gonna, whether it's a behind the scenes look or maybe they're even thinking about joining a tattoo TV show themselves. I hope that this is gonna be able to give anybody who watches just a little bit of a different perspective of what they've seen or what they think they know. So uh, I appreciate you just taking the time and letting us into your studio and uh, telling us what's up. Thank you, man. I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. And it was uh, fun talking with you. Awesome, man. Appreciate it. Boom.